In this tutorial in Microsoft Excel, I'd like to show you some of the chief differences between a range and a table. If you look at the screen, you see I have two apparently identical tables. The top one with the blue is designated as a table. The other one, which looks identical, is not a table. It's a range. And then the Girl Scout cookie sales on the right is a range. So how do they differ? How do they operate differently? How do you convert one into the other? We're going to answer those questions in this tutorial. First of all, basically, when you start entering data into any Excel workbook and you have cells that are next to each other in a cluster for a reason, uh, that is technically called a range of cells. And everything here from H2 down to L7 is a range. I entered all the data in manually. I formatted the uh, table manually, changing the fonts, the colors, the bar at the top. On the left side, I did the same thing. And then I took this range and created a table of it. Now, what's the difference between the two? Why would you want one rather than another? Let me show you some of the key differences. There are more, but we're going to show you a few. First of all, when you're in a range and you want to format anything in the range, you have to drag your cursor across the area and then you have to format the particular cells uh, manually. And you can adjust it any way you want to. The other thing is, is that when you're working in a range of cells, uh, there are some mathematical things you can't do. For example, let's compare these two, the table and the range. On this one, if I type a number below this table, or even a word, we'll type a number for now, all it does is it receives the number and nothing in this particular cluster changes. Watch what happens when I type a number at the bottom of a table it immediately wants to include it in the table. So if I type anything adjacent to the table, it says, I think you want me as part of the table, and so we're going to change things. We'll add you. I'll hit Control-Z to get out of that. Watch what happens when I type something to the side. Again, it adds a column. It's looking for a column number. I'll get out of that again. The same thing is true even if I type a word that's next to it. It will assume that now I'm trying to expand my table. If I do that in a normal range of cells, it doesn't know and doesn't care. And sometimes that's exactly what you want. You want to type words adjacent to it and not expand uh, the number of cells or the formatting. Another way in which a range is different is you see this little blue marker at the lower right corner of the range. If I take that marker and drag it to the right, what it does is it adds to the columns. If, if I take the marker and drag it down, it will add to the rows. So it's trying to be intelligent for you. If I, I don't have such a marker here on my range, I have my normal copy, and so I click here and copy, it simply copies the value to, or the formula to the cell to the right. So that doesn't do me any help there. Another difference between a range and a table, we have the table up here, is how the cursor functions. When I have so, uh, a group of cells defined as a table, when I start moving the tab key, it goes to the right, but watch what happens when I get to the end. It continues going to the right just like you expect. This is a normal range of typing things in. Now watch what happens when I do a table. I hit the tab key repeatedly, and it rotates. When it gets to the end, it goes down the line and continues to move through my table. And now it actually adds rows as I continue to tab. 
and it keeps the formatting. Another thing that's different between a range, which is basically unstructured, it doesn't have all these special formatting tools, and the table, is what you can do with it. Let me show you one example. Uh, I'm going to click anywhere in my table, and once you're in the table, the table tools design is highlighted. I'll click on that, and I'll click on the filter button. And now I discover that I can filter these records. The little down, ar down arrow tells me how. For example, I'll click on main, and I can select all the records or just certain ones of them. I'll uncheck uh, two of them and click OK. And immediately, quarters one and two are not do not show. Now here's a gotcha you have to be careful about. This little icon shows me this table is filtered. These records are filtered. It does not show me over here that these are filtered because two of these disappeared because they're in the same row. So you have to be careful not to have information adjacent to a table when you filter it because you might think this is all the information I have over here without a visual clue. I'll click back on this and I'll click clear filter and we're back to where we started. Another thing you can do with these uh, uh, special tools that belong to uh, a group of cells when you convert them to a table, I can click down arrow and I can sort. I can sort largest to smallest. And now it's sorted all the cells according to uh, this particular column. And then I can click down here. <coughs> And let's do, let's do a reverse sort here. And so it sorted my cells for me. And it gives a little arrow in terms of the sort. And I'll just do Control-Z a couple times and get back where it was before. So you, you can do some extra features easily once you convert a range of cells into a table. Which raises the question, well, how do I do that? How do I turn a range, the normal typing in, in boxes and rows and columns, into a table? I'll show you how. I can click anywhere in this range of cells, and then I click on Format as Table. And I have a, an assortment of things I can choose in terms of uh, formatting visually. I'll click this one here, and that says, where is the data for your table? Well, it wants everything that touches everything else, and I don't want it that big. So I'm going to change that. And I'll, I don't want the Girl Scout cookies highlighted. I will take the headers and this area here, drag and hold. It says my table does have headers. It does. The headers are in blue. I'll click on OK. Now I just converted this to a table instead of a range. Now I have my filter buttons, which I can turn on or off. I'll turn them off for now. Uh, but now when I press my tab key, for example, it now operates because it says you are in a table. Now you can turn it back to a range if you want to. In the design tab, you have an option under tools to convert to range. Click on here and it asks me if I want to, I'll say yes. And now it's back to a normal range. Now you know it did inherit the formatting of the table, but uh, now it's a normal range. We'll have more on how to use the power of a table in future exercises. I used several versions of Microsoft Excel before I discovered that you can create this thing called a table. I referred to virtually everything in the document as a table, but this special tool allows you to do special things that are sometimes very, very helpful. I hope the distinction is a little clearer in your mind after this lesson. As always, we'd like to ask you to like us if you appreciated our efforts here and subscribe to our YouTube channel here at The Sharper Turtle. Thank you.